10 sieverts per hour, or equivalent to 1,000 roetigans, is a dose of radiation that can kill a person in just a few weeks. Immediately after the explosion of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the radiation level rose to several tens to hundreds of sieverts. In the present day, it's much safer around the disaster area. On average, less than one sievert, or 100 roentgens. Although in some areas, the radiation level is still fatal. Though Chernobyl is far from being the most radioactive place on the planet, there is a place on Earth where the radiation level is 10 times higher than in Chernobyl. It's a real radioactive hell. Where is this place located? Why is there so much radiation? Why do people still live there? And what does SpongeBob have to do with it? It all started in 1946 on the Marshall Islands in the picturesque Bikini Atoll, consisting of 36 small islands. 167 local residents didn't even expect what their homeland would be turned into in the near future. The entire population of Bikini Atoll was evicted by the American government and relocated to Nungarik Atoll, located 136 miles or 220 kilometers east, without any explanation. Poor islanders had no idea why they would be forced to leave their homes. However, after a few months, everything became clear. The American military began nuclear tests in the now abandoned atoll. The military used 100 tons of dynamite to destroy the coral ledges that were preventing military ships from entering the Bikini Lagoon. After a path was cleared, a fleet of 95 ships was able to freely approach the atoll. The ships were to become test targets for nuclear bombs. Some of the ships were carrying live organisms on board in order to test the effects of radiation on animals. The ships carried a total of 200 pigs, 60 guinea pigs, 204 goats, 5,000 rats, 200 mice, and a countless number of insects stored in grain. All of them were to be sentenced to death by the atomic bomb. In the first test called Abel, an atomic bomb named Gilda was dropped on July 1st, 1946. The bomb exploded at 520 feet, 158 meters above the target ships with a yield of 23 kilotons. Five of the military vessels were sunk as a result, while 14 more were damaged. 35% of the animals died from the explosion and subsequent exposure. Since the explosion occurred high enough in the air, a large number of equipment and animals remained untouched. However, the powerful nuclear radiation rose into the stratosphere, spreading pollution for thousands of miles. During the second test, Baker, a bomb named Helen of Bikini, was dropped on Bikini Atoll. It had the same yield as the first bomb, Gilda, but was far more destructive. Helen of Bikini exploded underwater at a depth of 27 meters and not in the atmosphere. As a result of the explosion, 14 ships sank and the remaining vessels had to be lowered to the bottom since subsequent cleaning of the radiation was impossible. In total, there were more than 60 nuclear tests carried out in this location, although they turned out to be just a small warm-up before what happened eight years later. At the time, the former inhabitants of Bikini Atoll were relocated even from their home, because on March 1, 1954, a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb was dropped on Bikini Atoll, which had a thousand times the power of the Hiroshima explosion. Even the testers themselves did not expect such an effect. According to the calculations, the explosion should have been just half as powerful. However, the nuclear mushroom cloud rose to 15 kilometers in the air. By the six minute mark, the height of the mushroom cloud had reached 40 kilometers. The diameter of the cloud was about 100 kilometers. At the same time, the wind was blowing in the direction of the inhabited island. Those residents had not been warned of the nuclear test. But most of all, the Fukuri Muri, Japanese fishing vessel, was very unlucky as it happened to be just 170 kilometers away from Bikini Atoll at the time of the explosion. All the crew members suffered radiation sickness and were disabled. Later, radio operator Akiri Kubayama died in agony seven months after the incident. In addition, a total of 856 more Japanese fishing vessels were affected, with a combined total of 20,000 people on board, as well as 50,000 tons of fish, which had to be declared as radioactive and unsuitable for consumption. The monstrous nuclear test was called Castle Bravo, after which the talks about the environmental damage of nuclear tests took place. 
But this did not stop the military from making two more similar explosions on Bikini Atoll. Castle Romeo, with a capacity of 11 megatons, and Castle Yankee, with a capacity of 13.5 megatons. These bombs also caused irreparable damage to the environment. Even though by the 60s, the US government recognized the Bikini Atoll as a clean place, and in the early 70s, returned some of the original natives back to their homes. Though by 1978, it became clear that this decision sentenced the islanders to excruciating suffering. Residents of the Bikini Atoll consumed food and water containing record high levels of radioactive isotope, cesium. As a result, children were born with genetic abnormalities and died before they were born. The number of oncological diseases exceeded all statistical records. Therefore, in 1978, Bikini residents were again relocated. By 2013, the number of people who originally came from the radioactive atoll was about 4,880. But on the islands themselves, there are more than nine who act as caretakers. And at the bottom of the ocean, next to the notorious place, is where SpongeBob lives. It is here that the creators of the legendary animated series made the setting for this strange yellow sponge, who is probably also radioactive. But even as SpongeBob isn't threatened by this environment, the remaining nine people are not at all safe there. Indeed, as recent studies have shown, the level of radiation on the Bikini Atoll is the highest on the planet. In the soil of the islands of the Bikini Atoll, the detected amounts of plutonium-239 and 240 are 1,000 times more than in Fukushima and 10 times more than in Chernobyl. And the level of cesium-137 in local fruits exceeds the norm by 11 times. As a result, a tropical paradise over the past 60 years has been turned into a radioactive hell. To date, the level of gamma radiation on the Bikini Atoll averages 191 millibars per year, or 1.91 millisieverts per year, which is almost two times the permissible norm. In a few isolated locations, the situation is even worse. The radiation level reaches 648 millibars per year, or 6.48 millisieverts per year, six times the norm. This is not enough to cause radiation sickness. If you eat fruit and drink the water from an infected area, the likelihood of cancer in the coming years is very high, almost inevitable. In addition, despite the large elapsed time period, the level of radiation in 2019 increased compared to 2015. So in the future, there's a chance that it will become even worse. Access to tourists for the remote corner of the planet will be closed for several dozens of years. This is how Bikini Atoll became the most radioactive place on the planet. Of course, this only takes into account the surface of the Earth. Underground, there are places with a higher level of radiation. Right now, under your feet, about 20 terawatts of energy are produced through the decay of radioactive elements. I'm talking about the Earth's core. In the center of the planet, according to scientists, 50,000 tons of uranium and 160,000 tons of radioactive thorium. Uranium alone will produce an enormous amount of energy equivalent to generating 4,620 nuclear power plants with a capacity of one gigawatt. If we were to find ourselves there, a few seconds would be enough to die from radiation sickness. Fortunately, the Earth's mantle, with a thickness of 1,802 miles or 2,900 kilometers, and the 31 mile or 50 kilometer crust protect humanity from the radiation of the Earth's core. However, another, no less dangerous source of radiation is just a few hundred miles from the Bikini Atoll open space. All interplanetary and interstellar space threaten death from its radiation. As far as we know, planet Earth is the only place where it is possible to protect yourself from the destructive force of the universe. But the presence of regions such as Chernobyl or Bikini is scary. Therefore, any atomic tests and actions that could lead to a nuclear disaster should become a thing of the past. Otherwise, we simply will not have a future. If you agree, give a thumbs up under the video and subscribe to the channel if for some unimaginable reason you have already not done so. See you in the next issue. What will be if we wrap you round and round with scotch tape? Throw the whole package into a microwave oven. Roast quite well. Feed that to a giant hungry whale. After that, drown you in the ocean. Then bury you alive, send you into space. Then let you drop back down to Earth straight to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. After that, take you out and dry you under a nice warm lightning storm. Dress you up, comb you out, stick you on a plane, climb to a height of 30,000 feet, and... Toss you out once more, where you plummet back down to the unyielding surface. Of course, without a parachute. What will happen then?
Let's ask Arnold. How are you feeling, buddy? You still on your feet? Well then, how about this? There's no time to explain. Just click on the link in the description and watch the first episode in this awesomely great new cartoon series, soon to explode across the entire damn internet. Come on, press the button. You can't resist subscribing to this channel.